Are we riding far tonight? Oh, a most unquenchable uh. hobbit. We'll ride for a few hours gently until we come to the end of the valley. Tomorrow we must ride faster. I thought we'd won the battle. Yes, yes, we won, but only the first victory, and that in itself increases our danger. There was some link between Isengard and Mordor which I haven't yet fathomed. How they exchanged news, I'm not yet sure. The eye will be looking impatiently towards Rohan. The less it sees, the better. At last they halted. Then, turning aside, leaving the highway and taking to the sweet upland turf again, they lit a fire in a hollow while guards were set, two at a watch. The rest, after they had supped, wrapped themselves in a cloak and blanket and slept. Mary was sleepy, but Pippin now seemed curiously restless. What's the matter, Pippin? Are you lying on an anthill? No, but I'm not comfortable. I wonder how long it is since I slept in a bed. Work it out on your fingers. Look, you must know how long it is since we left Lorien. Oh, that? I mean a real bed in a bedroom. You had the luck, Mary. You were riding with Gandalf. Well, what of it? Did you get any news? Any, any information out of him? Yes, a good deal. More than usual. But you can go with him tomorrow if you think you can get more out of him. And he'll have you. Can I? Good. But he's close, isn't he? Not changed at all. Oh, yes, he is. He has changed. But, oh, we've not had a chance to see much yet. <sighs> Well, well, if Gandalf has changed, then he's closer than ever, that's all. That, that glass ball now, he seemed mighty pleased with it. He, he knows or guesses something about it, but, but does he tell us what? No, not a word. Yet I picked it up and I saved it from rolling into a pool. Here, I'll take that. That's all. I wonder what it is. It felt so very heavy. I should like to know. I... Hello? So that's what's bothering you. Now, Pippin, my lad, don't forget. Don't meddle in the affairs of wizards. Oh, but our whole life for months has been one long meddling in the affairs of wizards. I should like a look at that ball. Oh, go to sleep. You'll get information enough sooner or later. All right. What's the harm in my telling you that I should like a look at that stone? Mm. I can't have it with old Gandalf sitting on it like a hen on an egg. Oh, if I yawn any more, I shall split at the ears. <clears throat> oh, good night. Pippin lay still now, but sleep remained far away. And at last he could stand it no longer. He got up and looked around. Driven by some impulse that he did not understand, he walked softly to where Gandalf lay and looked down at him. The wizard seemed asleep, but with lids not fully closed. There was a glitter of eyes under his long lashes and Pippin stepped back hastily. But Gandalf made no sign. And drawn forward once more, half against his will, the hobbit crept up again from behind the wizard's head. He was rolled in a blanket with his cloak spread over the top. There was a hummock, something round, wrapped in a dark cloth between his right side and his bent arm. His hand seemed only just to have slipped off it to the ground. Hardly breathing, Pippin crept nearer, foot by foot. Then he put his hands out stealthily. Then an idea came into his mind. He tiptoed away, found a large stone, and came back. Quickly now he drew off the cloth, wrapped the stone in it, and kneeling down, laid it back by the wizard's hand. He stole away and sat down on a green hillock not far from his bed. He sat with his knees drawn up and the ball between them. He bent low over it, looking like a greedy child stooping over a bowl of food. He drew his cloak aside and gazed at it. At first the globe was dark, black as jet. 
Then there came a faint glow and stir in the heart of it. Soon the inside seemed on fire. He gave a gasp and struggled. Closer and closer he bent and then became rigid. Who's there? Where, where, where's... Uh, quick! Ah, so there's the thief. Quick, cover that globe. But you, Pippin, the devilry, what mischief has he done to himself and to all of us? Come, Pippin!